or nothing. It hurts, right? It doesn't because that's how you're told to think. It's just number one. Okay, and we blame other people for mistakes. This is a cartoon, okay, from the internet. These two women are saying, and I quote, do their men force them to dress that way? How awful. And these women are saying, do their men force them to dress that way? How awful. Oh. Same thing. See how they look at each other? They thought the others are oppressed. It's mutual, the feeling is mutual. I'm not saying which one is right or wrong. And we're biased against people with disabilities. We're biased in favor of young adults, okay? And biased in favor of the skinny ones. The skinner you are, quote unquote, the better. That's why some people go bulimic and anorexic to the extent they're just bones, right? And some die. And whatever we do, even though is this commercial, no, we don't want to get the skinny women. We've got to get all sizes. It's still objectifying women. It's still selling flesh, okay? And some people just say, enough of this. Okay, that's why I sing sad songs. Okay, I do hip hop. And then uh, she said, I have all of the best uh, health gurus. I'll accept who I am. I'm fat, stop it. Okay, stop forcing me to be skinny. I can't be skinny. Okay, so there's some people who are saying, this is, there's so much discrimination going on. And there's so much pressure to be beautiful, to be fashionable. Especially <laughs> <laughs> the male standard, the men say, oh, we want it to be like this. It's the misogynistic body policing okay, by the man, the male standard. And okay, we have to go shopping, shopping, and shopping, and shopping, and shopping, and shopping, and shopping. Okay, and then we all listen to the same thing watch the same thing, and so on. And Dustin Hoffman, who knows him? Well, okay, played in a movie called Tootsie, and he acted as a woman. When he was being auditioned for the role, he said, make me beautiful. So the makeup artist made him over. It's, and he said, is this all you can do? Make me more beautiful. The makeup artist said, that's it. And he looked at himself, that's it. He cried. He said, "From." From now on, I realize how hard it is for a woman to look beautiful. There's so much pressure. He went through that to play that role. And he realized he can't be any more beautiful. And all women go through that on a daily basis. Okay, and sometimes in airline company, they will tell stewardesses, you cannot have dreads, your hair is bad. And they say, look, my hair is different from yours. This is discrimination. Because we all have different needs and way we prepare ourselves. You cannot just put your own standards on us. Okay? And we're forced to you know, wear certain things, to be like this. It has to be the right brand. Okay, white privilege and power. Okay? This is from Miriam Caffarella and Bob Gardner. And, she, and the three of them said that all female white professors. Huh? Uh, there's institutionalized discrimination. This morning we talked about, uh, Professor Stobel talked about, uh, structural violence, it's built in. There's so much built in uh, discrimination going on. That's why people of color, minorities, LGBTQIA, have to have family and friend support. And this is a quote. Whites are generally less aware of racism and white privilege. These are written by three white professors, female professors. Okay, therefore we all, all of us have to learn from one another, okay, with all of our diversity. In, in this room, for example. And nobody's born racist. We are, we we're taught racism, either directly or indirectly. What's DWB? <laughs> huh? Driving while black. Yeah, driving while black or brown. Okay? If you're brown or black, you know how it is, so what it's like. What does it, what does it mean? Yeah. Uh, what, does, what does driving while black or brown mean? You can get pulled over by a cop. You can get pulled over just because you look different. Now, I've been through that, and who knows Derek Smith? He to see me once. He saw me, the cop was like stopping me. And I was taught you have to be polite to the police, you don't argue, you just say yes, even if you know you're right. That's what I did. And I knew, in my heart of hearts, I didn't violate any traffic rule. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought you were the TWP, the talking of the. <laughs> okay, and Dr. 
of Anita Johnson Bailey did a study involving herself and co-faculty members saying that if two professors talk about diversity, one is a black African-American, uh, I'm sorry, that's redundant, an African, female African-American professor talks about diversity. Students would say, oh, she's so racist, she's so prejudiced, she's so biased. Whereas a male professor, Italian-American professor, talks about, you know, there's white privilege, there's discrimination, we have to talk about tolerance and acceptance. Students would say, whoa, that male professor is so cruel. This is a study, like, the same subject matter, they did an experiment, same syllabus, and same content, but the male professor gets good comments from the students, the female. African-American professor get, gets bad review. And consequently, the female professor gets lower evaluation than the male. They talk about the same thing. That's double there, huh? Female, African-American, male, white. Okay? So again, it's a, the case could be few. That's why I said case studies. It's not a generalization uh, on her study. Believe it or not, the original Statue of Liberty was supposed to be African American. Yeah, I learned this from an African American classmate when I was doing my doctorate oh, a million years ago. Yeah. yeah, you can find this. There are documents to prove this, but the US government said no, we throw it back to France. Give us a proper white female Statue of Liberty. Can you imagine it's supposed to be the, the chain unshackled? That's freedom, but no. This is beautiful, but this is what it was meant to be. That would Think give about it. That's your living. Think about it. And minorities get discriminated. And cartoon for your younger siblings or kids. You think they're so antiseptic and neutral? They're not. The good guys and women have fair skin and good accent. The bad guys, guess what? Have totally bad accent and dark skin. Children are taught racism and we don't even know. So they learn this by watching cartoon. You can, there's a link there to show you a part of it from YouTube. You can see the good guys, proper, correct, standard English. Bad guys, awful English. And Mark Anthony, right? He sang the national anthem. And people just hurled invectives and hate say, oh, why do we have a Mexican? Oh, we need an American. What happened to us? Excuse me, he's not Mexican. He's Puerto Rican and an American. And so, so what if he's Puerto Rican and American? And they have it all wrong. It's racism. OK? It's all, uh, that's why be careful when you write on the internet. huh? Yeah, it will haunt you. That's why I said, if you want to get a job, be careful with your postings on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, everything. And syphilis, uh, medicine, they, they injected African Americans with syphilis. You know that? To test the effects and then actually cause suffering and pain and disease. This is historical. Right, right, yeah, that's right. Eight minutes. Okay, and Center for Black Studies will tell you there are all kinds of blacks. That's why they call it black studies. Okay, it's not monolithic. Okay, they're all different. There's black Caribbean, black Brazilian, African American, and African who are not African American who came here. And they're very clear on their lineage, right? So I learned this from Dr. G. Who's Dr. G? You don't know her? Laverne, right? Okay, the director of the Center of Black Studies. Standard ground rule has problems, uh, and they're talking about it high level. This is uh, Professor uh, Michelle Alexander. She said, you know, when students misbehave in school, you have a bunch of them, the teacher oftentimes will zero in on a black boy. Like, but even all other kids are misbehaving and say, come here. Why are you doing this and that? And then they will expel the student. This actually happened a few times in DeKalb. And I've worked with some mentors here, like, you know, Derek Smith, Lisa King, Regina Curry. They're my friends. We're this close, okay? We have, uh, 
We're working with uh, African American children, and they expel the kids. We're just misbehaving. We can tell the parents. Look, do you want to talk this over with the school? Some would say no. We we'll just stay at home. And then they force the student to be delinquent, and they don't go to school, and then they do other things. This is what is called the school to prison pipeline. Because of the zero tolerance, we don't tolerate you doing this or that. Remember this morning, uh, like a water pistol? If you were there, you were listening. Things like that, like, and then they say, get out of this school. And then you're condemning the child to fail. Okay, that's documented in the book by Michelle Alexander. Okay, and this guy was arrested for having a stroke while being black, left to die on a jail floor. Can you imagine? It's awful. And you know, Trayvon Martin, he was in the Skittles and Ice Tea. Okay? And what happened? And the question is what if Zuckerman and Trayvon Martin changed colors? So you're speaking to us, we all know. Right. It's a rhetorical question. We all know what's going to happen. Whoops. Hello, National Security Agency. Are you married to us? NSA. There's a Hey, 